Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And today I'm going to start a new series where I actually read for the benefit of the blind or people who are too lazy to read my webcomic. I've been making a comic called Jack of All Blades. Uh, along with my pal Art Frederick for several years now. Some of you guys may not realize that. And I thought to myself, you know, I've got a lot of people that like my videos. They like my sense of humor. Maybe they'd like my comic. And then I thought, you know, I've got the ability to share with those of you who are less well-sided or less literate or less big fans of reading the uh, story that I've been working on, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. So, without further ado, Jack of All Blades. Chapter 1, Jack Attack. So, uh, Princess Jacqueline Kepler, who is a uh, minor royalty and thinks she's doing pretty well, is sitting on the carpet in her bedroom with her friend Marbles the Magician, uh, and the two of them are playing checkers. Uh, Marbles is hovering a few checkers in the air to demonstrate what a magical fella he is. Um, Jackie, just to give you a physical uh, description of her, she has, like, orange hair, and she wears goggles on top of her head. She's got, like, a little vest and, you know, wears shorts and has some sort of weird skirt thing over the shorts because she's, like, 13, and so, you know, she's going to dress like a weirdo because that's what teenagers do. Anyway, so we see Jackie uh, move one of her little red checkers to the end of the row, and uh, she yells, King me! And then, popping in the door Kramer style, is Ben Kepler, the king. He's wearing a uh, tuxedo that is pretty disheveled, ties undone, and jackets over his uh, uh, shoulder there. He probably just got out of some event or something. Who knows? Anyway, so he says, Please, niece, kingsmanship doesn't come from board games. It comes from outliving people. And Jackie replies, I thought you got to be king by marrying Aunt Becca against her dad's wishes. Ben says, and then I outlived him, clearly leaving me the better king. Check this, your mom just sent me some new military hardware to test out. You want to help your favorite uncle maintain peace through technological superiority? And Jackie jumps up with her fists in the air, as long as it's not more tear gas. So uh, then we uh, switch to an external uh, shot. We see that they're uh, in some sort of patio, lots of nice little tables, some chairs, and uh, there's like a firing range behind them. There's some silhouettes and some targets. Uh, behind this uh, silhouettes or targets or whatnot is like a big earthen berm, and then behind the berm are some trees and eventually like a huge castle wall. There's a few airships in the distance as well. Anyway... Airships are like blimps, for those of you who don't know much about airships. Anyway, um, so uh, they've got the box out on one of the patio tables, and they're both really happy looking. Ben says, great, it's that revolver prototype I commissioned. And Jackie says, this is so neat. You're the best, Uncle Ben. Then we see into the box, and uh, there's this, like, awesome, like, shotgun-looking thing with a revolving chamber and just loads of differently colored shotgun shells. Uh, or shell casings, and a piece of paper. So then uh, King Ben says, Oh, your mom sent a note, too. Ben, give the word in Detroit will mass produce blah, 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 your loving sister Jill. P.S. Don't let my daughter anywhere near this thing. And Jackie, her eyes get all big, and she gets super sad and kind of whimpery. And uh, Ben takes one look at her and says, Well, I promised you before I read it. And I'll be damned if I make a note, make a liar out of me. And then uh, they hug. So, there it was, page one. I'm not sure how well this works non-visually. So, feel free to comment in the uh, thing below if you are actually blind and watching this. Um, anyway, so page two. We see a statue of a woman uh, who is handing a bowl of food to a child. It is like a little, it is probably a hundred yards away from the uh, firing range. And we hear a bang, and uh, Jackie manages to f shoot the bowl of food out of the statue's hands such that only the middle fingers remain. And she goes, Whoops. And uh, Ben says, Come on, Jackie. You need to exhale slowly as you pull the trigger. If you can't do that, how can I trust you to move up to explosive rounds? And uh, Jackie says, no, 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 I got it. I'm ready for explosive rounds. And uh, 
Ben takes out one of the shells and pours a little bit of powder into his hand, saying, Take a look at this, Jackie. See how refined this gunpowder is? With great powder comes great combustibility. Jackie replies, Thanks, Uncle Ben! So then we see uh, two figures who had been watching in the background. Uh, we, we now cut over to them. Rebecca Kepler, uh, Ben's wife, and the queen, who the statue is of that we saw earlier. And Jack Kepler, who is Rebecca's brother, the minister of child services, and uh, Jackie's dad. So anyway, Rebecca says to Jack, Jack, you need to speak to your daughter. She just destroyed that statue of me feeding those lazy orphans you're always on about. And... Uh, so then we see a close-up of the statue uh, flipping the bird to this orphan kid. And Jack says, I don't know, sis. I think it's more true to life now. That's your essence captured in stone right there. And uh, so then uh, King Ben uh, takes the rifle or the uh, revolver from Jackie and says, let me fire one. And bang, blows the head off of the orphan child in the statue. And uh, so now the statue of Rebecca is flipping the bird to a headless child. And Jack goes, okay, wow. Now that's just uncanny. Still with me? On to page three. So Rebecca says, you're a horrible father. Jack's, no, I'm not. Yeah, you're right, but you do have a horrible daughter. And uh, Jack says, now, hey, now. And, uh... The Queen Rebecca says, she should be acting like a princess, but she's playing with tomboyish explosives instead. And uh, then we see uh, Ben, uh, King Ben, now has Jackie riding, piggy, riding on his shoulders and uh, preparing to fire the weapon at the area he points at. And uh, clearly not a very safe thing. Anyway, so then Jack replies, Becca, I seem to remember a certain princess stealing our father's prototype grappling hook just to sneak out at night. And uh, Rebecca says, only in hopes of meeting the right guy, you know, like a drummer or someone in a band. They sleep during the day. I was trying to continue the royal line. She is endangering it. Then we see uh, Jackie. Now she has handed the revolver to Ben, who is pointing it wildly while she claps her hands over his eyes, still riding his shoulders. And... Uh, Jack replies, maybe if you and Ben got busy continuing the royal line and gave him that son he's been waiting for, he could stop teaching my daughter to play with guns. And then uh, Rebecca says, she's also always hanging out with that goddamn tux-wearing magician. Magic is dead. It died when the gods left, but for some reason that lunatic is still pulling birds out of his sleeves. Doesn't that bother you? And then Jack replies, no, those birds are delicious. And uh, Rebecca says, yeah, she ate like 12 of them yesterday, but she's only getting taller, not wider. And she's calling me short stuff. And she stopped laughing at my jokes. And Jack replies laughing, and to think, I raised such a great kid. So here we go, page four. So we see Ben is uh, pulling one of the actual explosive uh, rounds out of its casing. And there's little fins on there. It's a little metal thing about two inches long. And uh, he says, these rounds go live as soon as they're out of their casings. You should never remove them unless you plan to do something at least this cool. And then he tosses it downrange behind him and there's a huge explosion. So uh, then Rebecca continues, considering how well this new gun is tearing up my garden, I can safely say we got nothing to fear from those stupid Texans and their dumb-toothed president. But, uh, Jack says, you think? Rebecca, of course, our family has ruled Rome for centuries. People love the status quo. And uh, Jack pulls out a newspaper and says, but they don't love you. You're pulling as the worst queen Rome has ever had. And uh, Becca takes the newspaper, drops her cigarette and says, human God, I am turning into mom. So then we uh, cut back to uh, Ben and uh, Jackie over at the patio table where uh, Ben is getting ready to put the gun back in the box. And uh, Ben says, you're a, lucky woman. you're a lucky young woman, Jackie. Most folks would have to live in a war zone to have toys this neat. And uh, Jackie says, this gun is pretty cool, but I'm not sure we need it. Why do the Texans hate us so much? And uh, King Ben says, even if they didn't hate us, chicks dig guns. We'd still need them anyway. And Jackie says, but they do hate us. Why? And uh, King Ben replies, 
their democracy distrusts our monarchy. I'm sure it's not entirely your aunt's fault, but she constantly mocks and threatens them. And then uh, Jackie says, if they hate us because of how we treat them, doesn't that make us the bad guys? And Ben uh, replies, nah, they just don't have a good sense of humor. We're hilarious. Page five. Jackie is uh, sleeping in her bed, back in her bedroom. All of a sudden, there's a huge explosion outside. She uh, sits up in bed, rubbing her eyes, and says, Oh man, why is Uncle Ben shooting the revolver this late? Then she looks out the window, and there are just, like, hundreds of airships everywhere, um, shooting each other down, shooting at each other. The city is all on fire, and uh, one of them is smashing into a building that's shaped like a tennis shoe, with a, a glass sock coming out of it. And Jackie goes, No, not the Shuseum. And uh, for those of you who are actually visually impaired, I apologize because this is an awesome picture of a city burning. It took me forever to draw. But anyway, onward to page six. So we see uh, Jackie has changed out of her night clothes back into her vest and short skirt shorts with a skirt it's not a short skirt it's like a skirt with shorts uh i think they call them skorts anyway so uh jackie says texan airships burning city no guards to wake me up i've got to get some firepower so uh we cut to the castle armory where uh jackie has tucked the uh revolver from earlier into her skirt or whatever and she says i wish there was a mirror in here i bet i'll look so cool with all this she starts stuffing her vest pockets full of uh, the uh, shotgun or the revolver ammo, and she is, like, ludicrously skinny being a teenager. Anyway, um, so as she's trying to shove all this ammo into the pockets of her vests, uh, one of the uh, shells kind of slips out of her hand, then uh, squirts out of the other hand. She finally grabs it, but then the actual metal part with the fins and the explosive bits uh roll like falls out she absorbs the shock with her with her with her sneaker right and then it just kind of rolls over toward the doorway so jackie just you know well brushes her head sigh of relief that bump was me hitting the microphone as i tried to breathe a sigh of relief dang it this is really hard to pantomime anyway so jackie goes woo and uh all of a sudden uh enemy soldier just kicks in the door sweet kick and yells, freeze! Jackie goes, eep! And uh, the uh, little uh, shell, the revolver shell, the explosive round that had rolled away earlier next to the door, gets caught between the now open door and the wall, which crushes it. Boom! Percussive door slam. And there's a crunch as the uh, guy's leg is broken between the door and the uh, door frame. So... Uh, page seven. Anyway, so Jackie kind of pokes her eyeballs out, or pokes her head around the door, and, uh, you know, there's the guy's leg that's still holding it slightly ajar, and, uh, he falls to the ground as soon as, or his leg falls to the ground as soon as she, uh, you know, opens the door, and there's two more enemy soldiers, and Jackie says, um, he was like that when I got here. Eep! And then she just gets pulled through the door, uh, the revolver falls to the ground, um, and, uh, one of the enemy's soldiers yells, don't damage her. That's the princess. And then suddenly Jack flies in, uh, he's got some sort of cleaver, decapitates the first guy. He says, let, immediately throws the cleaver into the eye of the second soldier, go, then grabs the, uh, crossbow of the third and final soldier saying, of my daughter shunk crossbow bolt right into the guy's uh, jugular or chin for those of you who know things that are near veins or arteries that but are not directly veins or arteries anyway so jack and jackie hug and uh, jack yells thank god you're okay and uh, jackie says i think i just killed a guy and jack says i just killed three if you promise not to tell your mother we can make a game out of this and Jackie is just in shock. Page eight. So, anyway, Jack says, Jackie, these people are here to hurt you, as he hands back the revolver to her. 
you've got to be able to defend yourself. So Jackie uh, is kind of freaked out and shaken, and she says, I just don't want to kill anyone. And uh, Jack says, I'll tell you what, next soldier you see, just shoot him in the kneecaps. Jackie says, and that won't kill him? And uh, Jack says, nah, it'll take his leg clean off, and the blood loss will kill him. Slowly. It's the it's better than he deserves for threatening my daughter. So, anyway, uh, Jack uh, lifts one of the helmets in the armory, and there's a little light that goes on inside the helmet. Apparently there's a secret trigger there. Think, uh, you know, the head from Batman in the Adam West series. And uh, all of a sudden, a shelf full of armor moves aside, and uh, it reveals a, like, fireman's pole. Although it's probably not for firemen. It's probably for non-firemen. Anyway, so Jack says, Jackie, I need you to take this fire pole down and follow the tunnel at the end. And Jackie says, alone? There will be guards there. There will be three guards at the exit. They'll rush you to Indianapolis where you'll be safe with Cousin Fernando. And uh, Jackie says, but I'm safe with you. Right here, right now, you are safe with me. Unfortunately, I've got to do a few things that are stupidly dangerous. Take the pole, follow the tunnel, get out of the city. And uh, so he hugs his daughter. And uh, anyway, so uh, Jackie says, what about Uncle Ben and Aunt Becca? And uh, Jack says, long gone. I'd have sent you with them, but you weren't in your room. So then we see, uh, we cut to an exterior shot of uh, the uh, kind of the area near the firing range we saw earlier. And one of the sold, and there's more enemy soldiers. One of them yells, "Halt! It's over, Queen Rebecca. We have you surrounded. We will shoot." And the other guy goes, "Sir, I believe that's a statue." And uh, the officer in charge says, "Weapons down, man! I want all of you to take this in. What kind of insane tyrant keeps statues of herself flipping off headless children? Do you see now what we are up against?" Page nine. So, uh, Jackie is taking the, uh, uh, fireman pole down through the secret passageway, thinking to herself, I'll never make my kids do this. And, uh, we see, uh, the three guards that are at the end of the tunnel, and it says, Escape Tunnel Number 27. And the guard on the far left says, There's over 60 tunnels out of the castle, and if no one important has shown up by now, they aren't coming. Ten to one, the next people who walk down that tunnel are Texan troops sweeping up. And the middle guard says, My farm is out there, and my family too. I can't ignore that. I'm leaving. And the uh, far right guard yells, That's desertion. And the middle guard says, Rome deserted my family when Queen Rebecca force-fed us her stupid-ass wheat reform bill. And uh, the guard on the left says, He's right. What do we owe the queen? My dad lost his trawler when she doubled port fees. And the uh, third guard says, Huh, I guess I did miss writing my cousin on his birthday because of her new stamp tax. And uh, the middle guard says, Goddamn postage hikes, I've had enough. I say we take a hike ourselves. And then we uh, cut back to Jackie, who is going down the tunnel still. And she says, Ugh, this must be like three miles. I hope the guards are cool at least. And uh, we see the uh, door at the end of the tunnel that says, Keep Secret Exit Closed, and there's uh, discarded helmets uh, leading out the door, and uh, no guards in sight. And Jackie just looks at it and says, And this is exactly why Aunt Becca complains about the military. Page 10. So, Jackie has uh, emerged from the secret tunnel, and she's in a field area there's a tree line in the distance um but at least the sky is visible in front of her and not all full of smoke and enemy ships so that's a good sign so she doesn't know how far out of the city she is or anything but you know she's at least beyond the imminent danger so she says to herself no guards so now i have to get to indianapolis on my own with an entire army after me this will take every scrap of my stealth and evasion training Hopefully the Texans count their eyes and then count to a hundred. And uh, suddenly there's a Texan sh- soldier comes up behind her without a helmet. And he just picks her up. Yoink! Says, don't I know you from somewhere? 
and uh, he's a big, tall, green, kind of chubby guy. He's actually an orc in the Jack of All Blades universe. Orcs are green. I don't know. That might be common. Am I wasting too much time describing what color things are if you're blind anyway? That would be great feedback. Feel free to mention that in the comments. Anyway, so uh, this orc, he has picked up Princess Jackie, and he yells, Oh man, oh man, you're that princess from Rome. I'd know you anywhere. And he flips her over his shoulder and says, My CEO will be so happy with me when I show you to him. He'll probably, he's probably real mad at me right now because I ran off during that battle. And I'll tell him, I'll say, I would have told you I was going to catch the princess, but the battle was really loud and I didn't want her to get away. And then you'll tell that, and you'll tell him that this is exactly just what happened. Won't you? Of course you will. He'll say, Ollie, he'll say, you're in big trouble for running off in the middle of the big fight. And I'll say, I wasn't running off. I saw this nice princess here and I thought to myself, my commanding officer would want me to go catch that princess. And I didn't drop my crossbow and helmet and scream because I was scared. I needed my hands free to catch the princess. And my helmet was blocking my vision. And it was a really cool war cry like, I am going to catch you, princess, and take you to see my CO. Yeah, you're a nice princess, I think. And uh, he's just kind of walking along. And uh, she sees that he has uh, put her revolver in his uh, hip pocket. And she's trying to reach for it. And uh, he can't really tell because uh, he can only see her feet because he's got her flipped over his shoulder like that. Anyway, he says, you're a nice princess, I think. I haven't really met any princesses before, but hey, uh, uh, you know what's pr funny, princess? I've been talking to your bottom when I should be talking to your face this whole time. So then he flips her over and says, that's no way to have a conversation. No, no, nope. Better. I hope my CEO lets me introduce you to my girlfriend. You'll like her. She's nice, too. And uh, Jackie is really displeased about missing that opportunity to get her gun. So anyway, page 11. So they are now in a wooded area. There's a lot of light. The morning light is streaming through. Um, and uh, Jackie is asleep in the soldier's arms. And he's just still carrying her. And he says, I don't want to worry you, princess, but I'm a little lost. If I had to be lost anywhere, though, I'd want it to be here. It's so pretty. I just have to take pictures. And uh, he uh, gets out a Polaroid camera and uh, snaps a photo of both of them. Uh, flash! And Jackie is just super mad looking because she is not pleased about being woken up or photographed or carried off by an orc. And uh, uh, Ollie uh, yells, Yay! You're so photographic, princess. When I get home, I'm going to hang this on my wall to remember the time I found you and brought you to my CO. We must be close. Yep, any minute now. And then, uh, so then it's, uh, you see a little yellow box that says, yeah, if you don't know, if you're blind and you don't know comics, there's, sometimes there's yellow boxes that explain, like, transitions. And this one says, six hours later. And, uh, Ollie says, wow, princess, it's so hot out. <gasps> pant, pant. I'd give anything for some lemonade. And then, uh, all of a sudden there's a, uh, lemonade stand. And Marbles the Magician is sitting behind it, and the sign says, Lemonade, one princess. And uh, Ollie says, Wow, what are the odds? Huh, he kind of rubs his chin a little bit. A whole princess seems a bit expensive for lemonade. And we turn back to Marbles, and the sign now reads, Lemonade, one princess or else. And uh, Marbles cocks a shotgun, points it at the orc. And uh, the orc hands over the princess uh, and her gun and says, uh, My Mima always said, better to trade a princess for lemonade than obstinance for a gunshot wound. And uh, so then uh, Jackie hugs uh, Marbles. And princess side hug is the sound effect while Ollie walks off with the entire jug of lemonade. Then it says, and chapter one, Jack attack. So... Anyway, guys, that was the first uh, the first chapter of Jack of All Blades. I'm going to be recording these weekly and uploading them at the same rate. You can read the comic if you have vision at jackofallblades.com. You can spell that with a Q or a K. We're smart enough to know you need both. Um, the original idea for reading comics aloud for the blind actually came from Web Comics Weekly, which is Brad Geiger, Scott Kurtz, um, Chris Straub, and Dave Kellett. So special thanks to them for helping me be aware that this might be a need that people have. 
and I would love to, uh, like I said, I'd love to hear if you are actually blind and if this is useful to you. If you're not actually blind, is this still enjoyable? Do you like being read to while you see the comic? Um, would you prefer that I have a version for non-blind people where I just show the comic and read the text, but I don't necessarily do stage directions? I don't know. This whole thing's a big experiment, so feel free to click thumbs up, thumbs down, tell your friends, especially if you know anybody who's actually blind. I, I don't know if this is helpful to them, and so I would love to hear. Anyway, this has been Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee, sharing Jack of All Blades by Joe Hills and Art Frederick. And uh, also, yeah, the, that's the other thing. Uh, this is all copyright me and my friend Art, and Art is an awesome guy. And you can follow him on Twitter at uh, using the at sign and then Art Frederick, and you can follow me on Twitter as at Joe Hills. So, yeah, I think that covers all of our bases. Till next time, y'all, keep adventuring.